Okay, so got the solar, I guess, and the main part of the wiring done. This part over here is basically the AC. You've got the inverter and a breaker panel. From here to the left is basically the, D, the DC. So I'll go through each one of those things and talk about it. So the best way I think I can do this is just try to trace hot wires and show you how those run. So don't worry about the blacks right now. Just look at the red wires. So I've not wired it yet, but there'll be a, a hot solar wire which will come in here and that's coming from the just panels up on the roof. It's got about nine amps coming in and this is a 15 amp breaker. So it's gonna come in here, hook up to here. Now I can control that breaker with this, or, or that power with this breaker. So off and there'll be no power beyond the, uh, the roof. So that comes up, goes out, and then goes to the just positive photovoltaic of the uh, charge controller. The charge controller does its thing, passes it out back towards the batteries, but on the way to the batteries, it's gonna stop through this, this breaker. So this is a 100 amp breaker. Um, so you'll notice that there's a positive, with uh, the DC circuits, there's positive and there's negative. So the positive, I went through this with Morningstar, with the last van and also uh, Midnight Solar. So the breaker company said to turn the positive towards the line voltage. Well, in theory, the solar panels are the line voltage, right? They're the ones that are producing power. But then the charge controller, which was Morningstar back, back then, said to turn the positive towards the batteries. Um, so I thought about it and the batteries have a lot more ability to <laughs> generate uh, pos uh, uh, big voltages and big amps if they short. So I'm turning the positive towards the battery. So this goes right here and then goes into the main positive bus bar. So from this lug, we'll go the, to the main, to the battery. Uh, there'll be a 200 amp fuse right there and then it'll go to the main lug of the batteries. And then all the batteries look, are tied together in parallel. So, so power comes in, passes it to the charge controller, Charge controller says, great, here's some, some very clean power to, to, uh, to send to the batteries. Goes through the batteries, or it goes through, through, through the breaker to the bus bar, and then here it will kick out to the batteries. Oh, okay. So over here then is, this is the 12 volt uh, uh, just panel that will give me all of my different circuits. Um, so all it is is passing one, one lead off of here through a 100 amp uh, uh, fuse and then passing it through all of these circuits. So this is all positive and these up here are negative. Um, so this is a blue star uh, uh, panel. So then over here, this is a basically a battery, uh, battery isolator. So I'm gonna run a long wire in from the, from the Dodge battery That'll hook to here, and then that will pass power to the panel, <coughs> or just to this bus bar, and then the bus bar will pass power to the battery. So when the char when the car is running, the uh, and the alternator is running, it will pass the voltage here to charge the battery. So the batteries have a lot of ways to charge themselves. They can charge themselves through the sun, they can charge themselves through the alternator, and they can charge themselves through shore power that comes that comes this uh, uh, this way. To the to the bus bar and then to the batteries. Um, so I'm so this requires another 200 amp fuse uh, hooked up to the battery, and I'll get to to that. I'm going to run it along the the wall here. There's going to be a just just cabinet wall, so I'll run that down through floor, <laughs> all that way up to up to the battery, and then plug in. Fine. Okay, so the so the inverter, so the so the just batteries are here, and the battery is passing power to the uh, through uh, this thing, this lug, to and that goes to the inverter. And that goes through a 300 amp fuse first, and then it goes through a blue C switch. So I like being able to control that. Yes, you could take out the switch or the fuse, but that's a pain. I like to be able to control this, so if I want to work on this, there's no power coming through from, from the batteries. Yes, you could unplug uh, this this lead, you know, just easier just to turn it off. So, so um, with 
with inverters, they do draw power even if you're not using anything. For it, for it, for it to just to be energized is going to drain your batteries. So it does have a power saver mode. That's not worth any any uh, uh, thing. Most I think it takes about 40 watts for that to, to even work if it's on power saver. Uh, and most of the stuff I have doesn't use 40 watts even, so it doesn't really work. Okay, so this does have a remote access for a version of this. So you can switch it on or off. Um, so I did spring for that. That uses a basic Ethernet cable. Um, and it's not cheap. It's like $130. Um, you know, everything in an RV is expensive. Um, if it says um, house part or house nut, it's about one-tenth the price than if, than, than, than if it says RV part or solar part. They, they know that they've got you, so uh, I sprung for that switch. Why? Because with the old way, we would use this switch as a way to turn on the power to the outlets. So that's okay if it's a nice day, but if it's dark outside or rainy, you got to go, you know, outside, <laughs> come back, just open up the doors, reach inside of here, and turn on the switch to give yourself power at the outlet. So that was pain. That's worth $130 <laughs> over the lifetime of uh, the use from this. So I'm going to take and run that around. It's going to go across the beds right here, remember, and then go on the uh, front of the cabinet as you enter in. So, so then as you're working at the kitchen, you just take and flip it on, then you got power to, to the outlets. Um, some things you just got to pay for. Um, so yeah, I like to have some kind of way to chart to, to just turn off the inverter. I can turn off the power to this panel by just, by, by just doing a, doing a trip. I can turn off the power from the solar panel just by doing this. So there's, there's a way to turn off all the power. You know, if you ever want to work on it, it's just less work. Okay, so down to the inverter. So this just turns DC power into AC power. AC is what you have in, in your house. Um, so both this and the charge controller can be tuned to what kind of battery you've got. This one uses a series of uh, uh, just a plain dial, which is not you know that accurate. And this one has a much more accurate to where you can charge a glass mat battery, a lead acid battery. Um, so uh, both of these can be dialed in to different batteries. So it does have some different readouts, but the last one worked fantastic. So I stuck with with uh, uh, this one. It does weigh about <laughs> at least 50 pounds. It's a heavy heavy dude. There's a lot of copper or something inside there. So lastly is the basically a little house breaker panel. So you've got power coming in from shore power and it goes to the power end to to the in, uh, to the inverter. So so the inverter has a way to sense power and if if everything else is off it'll just pass that up and then uh, run it right to the to the just just breaker panel. So in the breaker panel is different is is four four different circuits, um, and those go into the wall and then you know up into the up into where there's going to be power. So there's going to be a countertop outlet and a TV outlet, and in back of me is going to be another countertop outlet and a microwave outlet. So there's four outlets basically in the van. So this part over is just about AC power and that part over is just about DC power. So with negatives or the, or, or the ground, those also go through a main bus bar. So you've got this panel goes through the ground bus bar. You've got the inverter goes through the ground. You've got the solar power uh, or just charge controller goes through the ground. And um, the shunt goes to the ground. So. With the shunts, the deal is this: uh, one side, the part that you that does all the sensing, has to have nothing in it besides the battery. You can't have like one of the sides going up to just feed this panel, and then one one side goes up to do that. No, they've got to all be joined on one side of the shunt. This is a thing called a uh, whiz bang, which just helps feed more information to the charge controller about about. How, what power is being used 
and um, uh, how to display that. So um, uh, there are other ways to do it, but this is fine. Um, so in this will be the negative lead to the battery. So, so the batteries are going to sit right down here, and uh, that will hook right to there. So there'll be nothing in between the, the negative battery lead and this lug. Okay. Um, oh, and uh, so you can control the power of this one just by turning it off too. So, so that's off and that's on. So I can stop any power coming to this just by turn by just just turning the switch off. So I keep everything in the offset right uh, now. So when I plug it in, everything's off, 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 and uh, off. Uh, when I plug in the solar panels and nothing gets charged, all the voltage from them will stop right here. So, so this lug and and, and uh, uh, just this lead will have no no voltage going to it. So when I get everything wired in, then you turn things on one at a time. Now, when you're running it, you don't have to worry about that so, so much. But when you're taking out components and uh, playing with it, you do have to consider how that component will get energized. And if you're energizing it with uh, a loose fitting, trying to bolt it down, <laughs> that's, gonna, that's not the best thing for it. So try not to try not to do that. Um, yeah, uh, let's see what else. Oh, and uh, so then this this entire bus bar goes back and hooks to the chassis uh, with a big bolt and I uh, took away the paint from it from the back of the bolt and I used a electrical um, anti-corrosion uh, gel um, um, on that area so it so so it won't rust um, also the grounds are pretty self if it's got a metal case you want to have that to the ground so this has a ground this has a metal case, so that's got a ground. This doesn't need a ground. Uh, this has a ground, which is right there. It goes up, and I join it to a little, little bitty bus bar, so I can kind of, kind of not have 12 wires going back. And then finally, the breaker panel has a little ground, which you can kind of see right there. So those are pretty easy to, to understand. Um, the negatives are pretty easy to understand. It's just how do you route all this stuff? And also, um, with this particular midnight solar charger, the classic 150, um, the biggest wire it will take is a four gauge THHN, which is a common household type stuff. All of, all of these stuff, this and, and this and this is, is all welding cable. So the cable choices are mostly, you just <laughs> try to make it, you put as big a cable as stuff will hold. So four gauge THHN will, will work. Four uh, gauge uh, welding wire is a little bit fatter, and this barely go this, uh, just this barely goes in, so the welding wire won't go in without you trying to just force it or cutting off some of the wiring. Um, so how do you pick uh, wire sizes? Um, you know, if it's a short run like these, I mean most of the runs in here are less than a foot. So really, I don't, you know, all this is probably overkill, but it's no big deal. Um, uh, just go with as big, big a wire as you can. Um, stuff like this views a uh, two uh, uh, wire is as big as will fit in that. Um, I don't. They might make four out uh, fuses, but I, I've not researched that. Um, this is pretty snug going with a four gauge wire into this fuse. So um, uh, if it's got a lug, that's not a big deal. You can always make that work. But if the wire's got to fit into something, that's a big deal. And um, I, I, my my main thought is just uh, get as big a wire as as will fit in uh, there. And then it's you you can always have too big of a wire. That's not a problem. The problem is if you have too small of a wire. One thing is the wires get hot. The second thing is with solar panels, um, the uh, there can be a little too much resistance with smaller wires, so you have less output with smaller wires. Um, with the inverter, um, it depends how much you're going to draw on that. Um, what do I have? Uh, <laughs> a countertop outlet, which which doesn't really power much. We're going to put a induction, a uh, little cooktop. I think that's 1800 watts, so uh, that, that may be the biggest draw I've got. So if you're going to push things a long distance, then you need bigger wires. But really, uh, for a foot, you could probably get by with a smaller wire. But, you know, I don't push it. I just try to make <laughs> you try to just overbuild everything and and just overdo everything because you can always be too big but not too small. Okay, so I hope that helps you. 
Um, I'll show how the, I'm going to put on the two solar panels tomorrow and then uh, show how that it's just an easy run it into here. You tie one end of there and you run one through through here to the last lug of the photovoltaic negative and that's it. Okay, bye.